What's going on everybody and welcome back. Now you may have been noticing there's been an uptick in magnified optics, specifically in some longer range stuff because I've been testing several things out recently and there are a few more videos that are coming out very soon because I've been working up to something. And the something that I have been working up to is kind of twofold, not only because I want to take long range more seriously than I ever had, I've played around with it, I've dabbled, but it's time to get serious and really kind of put the nose to the grindstone, get some things done and shoot further than I've ever shot before. And the second is I've always wanted to build a really cool rifle, a chassis build, an absolute long range precision tack driver, and just have that one really cool, nice precision build. Before we go any further, we have to pay the bills real quick here though with the help of hidden hybrid holsters. If you don't know who they are, they make those sweet suede backed Amish made leather holsters with the Kydex front for that kind of all day comfort. They got a ton of options, everything from your magazines to your actual daily carry, belts, all kinds of good stuff over there. But because of everything that's gone on over the past couple of years, I've kind of worked up to it in stages. So I've been playing around with that 6.5 Creedmoor build I did in that LR308 from Aero Precision. I built that having a ton of fun of it. I actually lent that out to a friend who's gonna be doing some videos on that as well as they move into long range precision as well, kind of in a cheaper platform. I've also been doing a lot with the 6.5 Creedmoor 2020 Waypoint from Springfield Armory. I love that thing, it's an absolute tack driver, beast of a rifle, and it's been a ton of fun testing everything on that. And that was most recently that primary arm 6-24 I had on that doing a video on there as well. And then I got that Bergara B14R Carbon, which is a 22 LR kind of trainer rifle because much like everybody else figures out, Long range precision, especially when you're in the 6.5 game, whether it's PRC or Creedmoor or ARC or something like that, it's really expensive. But it's a ton of fun to get a little 22 LR trainer and just pinhole targets. Now, I've got some other stuff going on with that. I've got a full dedicated video going on with that rifle very soon. But I just wanted to get a few more rounds through it, run out with a suppressor to see what it was really going to be all about. All right, so all of this stuff has led me to finally getting to my custom build because you're waiting like 21 weeks on a barrel right now. And I really wanted a specific setup. And that specific setup is going to be built off of this action. Now, this one is barreled already. I wasn't planning on having a barreled action. I was gonna do it all myself. But the barrel that I ordered from Criterion like 25 weeks ago still isn't here. So luckily my buddy that owns this company had a proof barrel and put it in that action for me. So let's go ahead and take a really good look at the parts for this. I've got just about everything. There are a few big parts that are left out right now because I want to talk to you guys about what they are. So make sure you get subscribed up so you can follow along with this series as I try to finally get that one precision rifle that I've wanted since I was a kid. All right, we're going to go ahead and get into the parts and take a good up close look at what is going into this build, starting with that action. So as you can see, this is a Remington 700 based action is custom using a what they call a Remage barrel. So it's a Savage prefit into a Remington 700, which makes it a lot easier to change for us common folk out there. And the cool thing about this is my buddy actually was part owner of JJ Rock. Uh, his company's got a super good reputation in the competition world. So I'm really a huge fan of this action. I've got to play with some of his rifles before. They are super smooth and they've been used in the King of Two Miles more than once. And people whack those targets two miles away with them. So it's cool. The barrel on here is going to be a proof research 24 inch 65 Creedmoor. And this is the competition contour. I'm almost positive. Uh, I forgot to ask him, but I looked it up and I kind of calipered it out. And that is the competition caliber. So very nice uh, bolt in here. Very nice action. The bolt in here can be removed and the head can be taken off. So you can actually change calipers or excuse me, you can change bolt faces and change calibers in there, uh, which is very, very cool. So wrapping up the uh, barrel in there, I'm going to go with the right now just the dead air muzzle brake so I can run my suppressor on it, um, have some fun with it that way. I haven't decided if I'm going to leave that on there or not, or do uh, something else down the road, maybe another chemo mount or maybe just a dedicated brake. I will figure that out later. Moving into the trigger here. So this is the Timney Elite Hunter. It's in that nice kind of green color. Fan of that, but it's got a really wide trigger shoot in it. And I liked that. I used this in a friend's gun and it just had a great feeling with it. Now it's very adjustable. You can do the over travel, the pull. Um, awesome, but it's got a super wide shoe. So depending on what you're putting it in, 
you might have to grind out a little bit of that bottom metal. Not sure if that's gonna be 100% staying in there, but it's definitely the first one I'm gonna test because I've had a good experience with it. As far as the top rail, like I said, that is a 700 action. It's compatible with everything, 700. So this is a standard uh, rail mount for it in a 20 MOA, which is pretty much what everybody said to go with. They have two different versions. One's kind of like a longer overhang. And my buddy's like, you're not gonna need that. Don't worry about it. Because if you ever change to a different style barrel or really low optics uh, mounts, you can have some issues with that depending on the length of pull. So just got this one. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna do everything I need. But instead of getting just the basic cheap one, I sprung for the Night Force one. Why not? It was like 20 bucks more. And I just wanted to really build this thing with everything that I wanted and make it really nice. So talking about the actual chassis. So I took my time and decided on this one right here. So this is the KRG Whiskey 3 chassis. So I think this is like the sixth generation of this, uh, but it is really, really nice. And there are a lot of different chassis out there in the world. And I did get some good options. I got the whole Arca Swiss undermount here and I got a few, a few cool options on here to start with and then I'll kind of upgrade from there. Uh, but the nice thing about this chassis is it's just solid. Um, obviously it's folding, but you can see you've got riser adjustment, you've got angle adjustment for your buttstock, uh, length of pull adjustment. You can put different attachments for your bags down here. I did get an angle bag attachment. Uh, the folding portion of this is very, very solid. It's all constructed of metal. Um, the hinging, everything on here is super nice. So aluminum back here, um, it's metal or steel where it needs to be in here on the mechanisms and all that. It just feels so solid, which is not what you would think for being, you know, polymer up in this area and then having that integrated metal chassis throughout that system. But it's just beefy and it looks good. And these guys have an outstanding reputation out there. Of course, I got it in that gray and it'll come with basic stuff like your QD mounts for the sling. You're going to get one mount up here. So you can use your bipod up there if it mounts to that style. And then it's literally got all the screw hole and options everywhere. You can go crazy with these getting, you know, uh, night vision mounts for them and a full uh, rail cover like that. Anything you want comes with the bottom setup, everything you need, magazine release in there, standard AICS mags. So good to go. Just what I wanted. And I think it's going to look super, super slick with that black and gray and then some accents going on in there. So what's missing and let's go ahead and talk about that. All right, well, that's a pretty good look at everything I've chosen so far, but there are a few big things missing, and this is where you all get to chime in because I know some of you out there are absolute long range enthusiast tack drivers. And then we're going to talk about why I've gone and chose the things that I've already chosen and what I'm kind of open to uh, for certain other things that could be coming. And number one, obviously a huge thing that I haven't chosen yet is the scope. Which optic is this going to get? I can tell you it's going to be in mills because I've just gone to mill on everything. But I don't know which brand I'm going to go with. Am I going to go with a Leopold? Am I going to go with a Night Force? Maybe one of those track. Those seems to be an amazing value or something else. I know US Optics uh, is out there and a lot of precision guys love that. So I'm really curious to get as much information from you guys as well, especially if you're a competitive long range person on what you think is the best value for the money. And number two is going to be a good bipod because I've got to go with something better than a regular old Harris, even though I know Harris bipods have been used around the world for decades and wars and all kinds of stuff. I just want to get something really nice. I want this to be my one and done. Just everything was top notch build on it. And there's a ton of good stuff out there, but bipods get really expensive. So let me know what your experience is. Send over everything from Atlas to some other custom ones can be anywhere from like 279 up through like 500, 600 bucks, depending on some of them that I've seen out there. I also need to get like an extended spigot mount that fits on the front of that chassis. So I can mount the bipod a little bit further out being that's a 24 inch barrel. And this was suggested to me to get the XL version uh, from another sniper that served in special operations and is actually a competitive shooter now and works for a scope company. And he kind of wants to remain nameless, but he said definitely get the XL directly from KRG. So I'll be doing that very soon. And the last thing that's kind of a major part, I was advised to get some form of stop right before the magazine, almost like a barricade stop because several people have brought up to me that you might push that rifle forward, especially if you're doing some competition or movement stuff and jam into the magazine, causing some feeding issues. So that was something that was pretty highly suggested. 
And since that underneath is gonna be an Arca Swiss setup, it's probably gonna be a quick detach thing so I can move it forward and actually use it as a forward stop as well. All right, let's talk a little bit about why I've chosen what I've chosen so far. First, starting with this action, the JJ Rock action. And I think this is actually the last action that's gonna actually bear the name of JJ Rock because my buddy John that owned that company with Rock McMillan, it's been sold to Dylan now for Dylan Rifles. So I don't know what's all gonna be changed, but pretty cool that I got one of the last ones that came off the machine with my buddy's name on it. We were in the military together, went in together, same times and stuff, became friends and went to different battalions and that's kind of how life goes. Now he lives literally a half mile from me, so that's absolutely awesome. I went with this because it's got a very good name brand out there and they use uh, their Super XL actions were used in the King of Two Miles competition and they sell rifles to very cool entities out there. He still trains very cool entities. So that's awesome because there's a lot of trust there between uh, knowing that brand is out there in the world and the feedback that people have given it. And of course, he's a friend of mine. And I obviously wanted to support his company. And when it comes to the barrel, that proof research was just a no brainer. So why try to save like 75 or hundred bucks when you're trying to build an all out precision rifle and proofs reputation in the industry is really, really good. I'm not saying they're the best thing out there, but I think most people are going to tell you, you really cannot go wrong with a proof barrel. I didn't need that really expensive carbon fiber one. So the steel version was going to be fine for me, but they have a reputation that I'm willing to pay an extra 75 or hundred bucks for. I don't even think it was that much compared to some of the other really good names, Criteria and Krager, stuff like that, all the names that were thrown at me, it seemed to be that one was just worth a little bit more. Now that trigger in there coming from Timney, they're actually the oldest and the largest manufacturer of aftermarket triggers. And they've got an awesome reputation. I've used several of their triggers in previous builds for things before. This is my first kind of movement into the 700 um, style action bolt gun uh, stuff because I've always just used factory triggers. But again, I want this thing to be one and done. I want to love it. I'm going to test that one first. If it's not quite what I'm looking for, I might try some other brands. Um, but that to me is going in there for sure because I've had a chance to run it in something else and it feels really good. And of course that chassis now KRG or Kinetic Research Group has an outstanding reputation in the industry, both precision, tactical, all that stuff. They make really nice stuff. Uh, you definitely know you're getting something of quality because of the way it feels, the finish work and definitely the cost. But again, I want this to be my one long range rifle until I end up doing something stupid and building another one in another caliber. And KRG is also a veteran owned company. It's a couple of ex group guys that started that and run that company. So there's a lot of respect there because they've used things in country. They've got a lot of experience with it and they built this thing off of that knowledge experience and time that they did in service. So I'm just super excited to get this thing together and get the first couple of rounds through it, get it dialed in and just have a ton of fun. So ultimately the goal is to hit a mile with this as long as I can get out to a range locally or somewhere in the desert where we can get to a mile. I'm gonna be going to some training classes and stuff just to kind of freshen everything up. But I can't wait. I really wanna get this thing done. I really wanna have some fun with it because I, I can see it in my head. This is one of the first things where I can actually picture the rifle in my head. I can see the colors, I can see everything on it. I just don't know all the name brands of what it's gonna be yet. And I just can't wait to ring some steel at some serious distances and have a good time with it. So make sure you get subbed up, turn those notification icons on so you can kind of follow me through this journey, this series of videos on this build and we'll see where it goes, how many different triggers, optics, uh, what I decide to do if I decide to build another one because it's got me excited. I haven't been like super excited about something like this in a while. So with that being said, get out on the rage and have some fun even though I've only got a barreled action here. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. I will see you all on the next one.